Paul Lewis Browning III, magistrate here, District 3 in Harlan County, elected official, basically breaks down into five districts in the county, second largest county in the state, and I am one of five. During my lifetime, when I was growing up, this was actually, had been converted from the depot. We always knew it as the shop building. I have a very interesting scar right here and right here from the shop building because they shaved the metal here. So they had these really cool metal shavings and piles outside. And I said, that would be awesome to just hang in my bedroom. It's really, it's just a really nice, cool, stainless steel coil. I pull it, it doesn't come out of the pile very easy. A little harder. That third tug, it came and um, some very sharp metal <laughs> objects came with it that then sliced and diced my finger. So I held my finger, walked up to the clinic, got it stitched up. And that was my most intimate re memory of this building uh, prior to it being converted back into, uh, I guess, repurposed or finding its original purpose as uh, a depot, although the tracks aren't here, obviously. but using it more as a, a welcome center, an educational area for visitors with Portal 31 is what it is, um, is its purpose now. We've got some different plans going forward, still along the same educational lines, maybe setting up some kiosks. I had a thought of maybe entering through the, the door that the original immigrants or, or citizens of Lynch came into and uh, having them kind of go through a timeline, almost with period specific clothing and things initially, and then come through kiosk by kiosk, maybe have a decade per kiosk, just showing the, the different growth in Lynch, and unfortunately the eventual downcline of coal and, and operations here in Lynch to its present day, where I think, again, we're, we're on an uptick. And I have always had a heart for repurposing things, and I think this is probably one of the it's certainly the biggest repurposing job that I've ever undertaken and it may be it may hold the world's record for repurposing in this case we're going from a, a town that was absolutely positively 100 percent designed built and functioned as a facility to remove a mineral from a mountain to be shipped off uh, that was that was its whole reason to exist and to go from that to now repurpose it I guess we're kind of, in, as opposed to shipping out, it's our idea now to ship people in and let them experience the volumes and volumes of history that are just contained, hopefully in part inside just this building, but walking towards this place just oozes with, with history, whether you're a fan of engineering, mining, architecture, every possible aspect of, of really anything dealing with history. It's, uh, it's, it's an amazing place. We celebrate the community that we built on the that's at the end of now. Um, what is the future? What's next? I think in the world of what's next, and this was certainly one of the platforms that as I was going door to door and asking people for the job of magistrate, I told them that I didn't necessarily bring an extraordinary specific skill, but what I do well is I'm a darn good cheerleader and I'm a darn good promoter. And I felt like we were at that transitional point in time where that's exactly what we needed. Uh, I would love to say that this was an idea all on my own and I thought it all up by myself and, and I'm solo. No, this is, this is a very collective thought process that just needed some wind in its sails, I guess. To, uh, or some tracks laid to opportunity. I realized I had, I as many residents here, had moved off at one point in time to seek employment and, and perhaps seek a whole nother life. Uh, as coal started declining, when I graduated in 1987, that was really as things started turning down, especially in Lynch. I went to Cincinnati, Ohio, a good friend of mine there, wanted to come home with me one weekend. I was coming back. He said, you mind if I go? I said, well, certainly. No problem at all. He got in the car, came in at night, and I brought him by way of Hazard Mountain Parkway so he didn't see much. Well, we got up the next morning and we were exploring and he was just completely taken back by the beauty of the mountains and things of that nature. And as we were leaving town, we were going down 119. We got past, just past Hiram, 
and he screamed, stop, stop. Just, I, I thought, well, I had no idea what he'd seen, but I thought, this, okay. I pulled over to the side of the road. He slung the door open and took off running behind the car. And I thought, what in the world is this guy doing? He runs about 20, 30 yards behind the car, reaches down, gets something. I thought, this guy has amazing vision. What did he see? He comes all the way back up and he's holding a little bitty piece of coal. And he said, I wanted to take a piece of coal to remember this trip by. And I said, well, you just cost me about $30 in brakes and tires. I said, about a mile down the road, there's a, there's a pile the size of this car that you could have had all you wanted. And I said, but, but at that point in time, that trip is when the light kind of went off for me. Something that I had grown up around my entire life and, and just became commonplace day in, day out was extraordinary to him. And that's when I realized that, man, as things go, this might be a, a really good, um, I guess, segue into what is next. And that's one huge part of, of what is shaping my thoughts. The second one, I was at a East Kentucky leadership meeting. This has been almost 20 years ago now. And I would love to give this gentleman credit. I can't, I can retell his story. And his whole focus for his conversation was, Every single place, town, or region that is based on just one form of manufacturing or just one industry eventually fails. He said, I know coal is doing well now. We were back on an uptick again as we are in the coal business. He said, I know it's doing well now, but I'm trying to prepare you for what's coming. So I kind of perked up and he said, when your industry goes away, and it will, he said, I don't want you to look at it as a depressed or a, a bad thing. He said, let me explain myself. He said, if you were to go into the middle of anywhere and decide that you wanted to start a manufacturing, a place for manufacturing industry or anything like that, he said, there is 20 plus years of infrastructure that you have to do prior to making the first widget in this case. He said, you have to have roads, you have to have water, you have to have sewer, you have to have electricity, you have to have housing and hospitals, police stations, fire stuff. He went through the entire game of schools, all of this. He said, so when, not if, when your industry leaves, he said, count yourself lucky. He said, you now have a clean slate and you're able to redesign your area in any way you want. But you already are 20 years ahead of everyone else because you've got all the infrastructure here. That was the second light bulb that went off in my head. We're way ahead. We're not behind. We're actually 20 years ahead of starting from scratch. We're way ahead of that. So, and I think we've seen it kind of start, start to come to fruition that tourism, especially motorized tourism in way of motorcycles and sports cars, we are the perfect fit for that. What has always been told to us locally as a negative, like, your roads are too small, you can't get things in and out. What industry would ever come here? You're so far removed from the interstates. You're so far removed from large cities. All of these things that have always been, I guess, checked off on their boxes as negative, 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 negative. I mean, in, in all of their minds, collectively. Uh, I mean, how many times have you heard someone say, we need a four lane highway, or we need this, or we need that. And everyone um, were, was up in arms when they took some of the tracks up saying, well, how would you get goods in and out of here now? What we've come to realize just recently, we're perfect. We're actually set up perfectly. A lot of motorcyclists, a lot of sports car people don't want to go red light to red light to red light like you do in Pigeon Forge or Atlanta. Oh my goodness. It just You can take any of these major cities and, and those people also don't want to do 80 miles an hour on the interstate all day long besides semi-trucks and, and weaving in and out of traffic. What they want is a nice secluded area with beautiful scenery, small winding roads, small town folks, mom and pop restaurants. That's what we are. That is exactly what we are. So I think that's going to be a, a perfect key to unlock what we're trying to do going forward. It's certainly going to be a large key to a large lot of what we want to do. And there's other facets that, that will, will come along with that, but it is, um, it is my hope and I think the collective hope of county government right now and, and most of the people here that, that tourism is going to be a, a huge part of their future.